Warning! The following video may contain people whom you might like, such as politicians. In case I piss you off, please remember that I'm not discussing who they are or what they do, I just talk about why people may dislike their face, so don't go hating in the comment section. Have you ever seen a face that made you think, fuck I want to punch it? And have you ever wondered why this happens? That's what I'm going to explain in this video. Welcome to Brains Applied. Scientists have concluded that humans have historically evolved in a way that maximizes our chances of survival in a fight when we're using our favorite weapons when none others are available, our fists. And research has showed that our hands have an ideal design because when you want to strike someone with your fist, your fists are able to cause a lot of damage while putting as little strain as possible on your bones. And the primary target for those fists, your face, has evolved in such a way that it receives as little damage as possible. This was very much visible in the big brow ridge and the strong jaw bones of the early prehistoric man, the Australopithecus. In the present day human, the Homo sapiens, these features are less remarkable because since the day of the Australopithecus, our upper body strength has decreased. Meaning that our face, in many cases, doesn't need that much armor. However, when we compare the male and female skull, we can still see notable differences because guys, just like animals, were supposed to fight with each other to conquer the heart of a lady. This is where punchable faces come in. People with a punchable face are very likely to somewhat have a baby face without a strong brow ridge, strong cheekbones or strong jaw bones. Weaker faces. And coincidentally, looking at those features of a person's face allows you to make a pretty good prediction of people's strength, fighting ability and aggressiveness. Because those features and the facial ones are very much defined by your testosterone level. In other words, people with a baby face are less likely to fight back and that makes them more punchable. But of course, that's not the entire story. People with a baby face are cute, right? And why would we want to punch a cute person? We love baby face people because they look more innocent. One study even found that baby face people on average have to pay smaller fines in the small claims court. However, context is just as important. And that's why Kanye West, Jaden Smith, Bill Clinton or Eric Trump all might have a punchable face according to you. It all depends on whether you like them or not. It's just that when baby face people do something bad, we link their face to the bad thing and their seeming innocence will just make them more despicable. The best example of this is Martin Shkreli. Martin Shkreli was the baby face CEO of the drug company Turing Pharmaceuticals. In 2015, he decided to raise the price of an anti-HIV drug from $13.5 to $750. After which, Shkreli made the headlines as the most punchable face on the planet. Or Ajit Pai, the member of the Federal Communications Commission who tried to end the so-called net neutrality rules in the USA. Some of you might not know what net neutrality means, so let me explain. Network neutrality is the principle that all internet service providers must treat all internet communications equally and not discriminate or charge differently based on user, content, website, platform application, etc, etc. The end of net neutrality would mean that ISPs would be able to randomly slow down your internet traffic, AT&T would for example be able to give priority to its own streaming services while slowing down its competitors like Netflix or YouTube. Or companies could ask for premiums to not slow down your internet. This dick move earned Ajit Pai a nice place on the punchable faces page of Google Images. The combination of context and facial structure is what makes a good punchable face. Because you will never want to harm a sweet person, but the bad person? 
why not? And even if Daniel Craig did something bad, you wouldn't punch the man because you can see his face and you can see that he's strong, he's tough and you wouldn't survive. But even context doesn't say everything. How your face expresses your emotions can make you less or more likable. Let's look at Senator Ted Cruz. When you compare his facial expressions to those of other senators, you might notice something weird. He doesn't have what is called a Duchenne smile. A Duchenne smile is what we see as an honest smile, where the corners of your mouth go up and your eyes have these little crow's feet. Most fake smiles don't have the last one, which makes you look less sincere. But in the case of Ted Cruz, the corners of his mouth don't even go up. His mouth always stays in this straight line. In fact, he always looks a bit sad while humans prefer positive faces. And this is one of the reasons why people might dislike Ted Cruz without knowing anything about the man. It makes him look less sincere and it might be one of the reasons why Ted Cruz failed during the presidential race in 2016. Hey guys, I'm currently editing the video and I actually realized something while looking for pictures. Ted Cruz nowadays has a beard and it actually looks really really good on him like it kind of covers up his somewhat baby face and it also does take away the attention from his mouth which is something that he couldn't do anything about of course because I guess it's just his muscular structure or something but yeah the beard actually looks really really good on him so good job Ted Cruz. Do you know what's also very 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 punchable? The subscribe button. I want you to smash it, punch it like it's Kanye West. Punch it really, really hard. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive a 100% free notification next time when I upload a new video. And I will see you guys later.